Hello, I'm Dr. Nathan Morris. I'm a certified functional medicine practitioner. I'm currently the chief medical officer for Atrium Innovations, and I'm also, as you will find out, a co-creator of Pure Genomics. And before I understood genetics, I always imagined that there was this billy goat gene, and I think you all know what I'm talking about when I say that, because there's certain people, it, it seems like they could eat whatever they wanted, they could smoke, they could drink, and it didn't seem to really affect them. And so I always called them the billy goat people because I was like, how are they doing it? How are they staying, you know, so healthy? And, and it comes to find out there are some individual variabilities. Some people are just genetically blessed with the ability to get rid of uh, toxins a lot easier than others. And that brings us into the individualization of medicine, which brings us into uh, genetics. And so when we look at the common genetic variations that can influence how we tolerate toxins, there's really three main categories here. There's antioxidant enzymes, there's detoxification of environmental toxic toxins, and these kind of interchange, or you can't really delineate and say they're two separate categories. And then there's estrogen metabolism. And so that's what we're really going to focus on today is those three main categories and kind of break it down in that way so it's a little easier to understand. Now, when we talk about genetics, there are some caveats to nutritional genomics. And I think I really, in every talk I've ever given, I've made this point, you know, nutri nutritional genomics is not a magic hammer, but it's one tool in a toolbox. We can't look at these and then say, oh, all of your genetics are okay. You can do whatever you like. You know, your lifestyle is not that important or your exposure is not that important. It, 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 it plays a role, you know, of what we're going to recommend, but we still have to focus on lifestyle and what they're doing with their diet, with their sleep, with their exposures. But it does give us some clues on those that are maybe not as genetically advantaged and where we may want to do some extra support. So nutritional genomics is a wonderful tool. I would hate to have a toolbox without a hammer. Uh, so with that in mind, let's talk about antioxidant enzymes. So there's three main antioxidant enzymes and some of them are really relevant right now, especially for folks out West and we'll talk about that. Uh, the first one is SOD2. So <clears throat> SOD2, this is an interesting one. SOD2 is an antioxidant enzyme that detoxifies superoxide to prevent harmful levels from accumulating. If you know, this is like the bad boy of free radicals. You really don't want a lot of superoxide around because it causes DNA adducts and other problems. And the less we have of this, the better. And it takes it to hydrogen peroxide. And what we know from implications that individuals with the AG or the GG genotype are associated with reduced SOD2 function. So when we see this AG or GG genotype, we really want to uh, focus on what they're eating, making sure they have enough vitamin C in their diet or even in supplementation. So, uh, and then uh, you also have to be aware when you see this, uh, that these people are going to need more support when they exercise. Uh, and meaning they're just going to need more antioxidants because they are going to have, they're going to be really good at uh, the side two functioning, but we have to be able to get rid of uh, the hydrogen peroxide and other things that are produced. And multiple case study control studies suggest an association with breast and prostate health. Although this association is much improved with the fruits and the vegetables. So if you take anything away from here, when you see side two, this is a really a great leverage point to increase those fruits and vegetables in your patient. So glutathione peroxidase, this is an enzyme as a member uh, of the glutathione peroxidase family. It detoxifies hydrogen peroxide. It's the thing uh, that actually takes the hydrogen peroxide uh, made from SOD2 and takes it on to water, which of course is what we want and it needs uh, glutathione in that pathway. Um, and so individuals with the CT or the TT genotype are associated with a reduced capacity to detoxify um, hydrogen peroxide, a reactive oxygen species. Uh, if you don't have this, this increases ROS production, especially during exercise. Once again, exercise shows up here. Uh, so, you know, when you see this, you really want to make sure uh, that we're doing what we can to improve glutathione production because that's really good. And, and we want to make sure we have enough selenium as well, which selenium is always important, uh, both for glutathione production and for the use of this enzyme. 
Uh, and this is associated with improved cellular health when these things are available if these genotypes are there. So when we see this, we're seeing a decreased capacity uh, from going from hydrogen peroxide to water. We need to do things to improve glutathione. And when we do that, we're able to help with this detoxification and move from hydrogen peroxide to water. Now, the next one, it's not one that we hear a lot about, or I hadn't really until I started doing a lot of the research on uh, genetics. And what I saw is this one actually is more important than, than, you know, uh, than the press it's received, I think. And this is an enzyme that detoxifies quinones, helping to limit the formation of free radicals. And that's really what we're talking about when we say that are things like benzene. So when people live in an urban area where there's a lot of urban smog, this becomes really important. Uh, also with uh, cigarette smoke, if someone's a cigarette smoker, besides the obvious advice to quit it, uh, you would wanna make sure that we're supporting this. So individuals with the CT or TT genotype are associated with reduced function. And there's association with cellular health. And when we say cellular health, what we're really talking about is a lot of times the amount of free radicals, the amount of antioxidants, how well our mitochondria are working, and we're gonna see improved mitochondrial function the less um, uh, oxidants we have there. So another thing that's important about this and I mentioned is that there's actually, and, and there's you know some research that shows that when we have forest fires, which in the West right now, we're really inundated uh, with these forest fires, uh, these people are probably gonna need more support because there are quite a bit of benzenes produced uh, during forest fires. Um, and they're still working that out while we see so much more in the environment. But this one's important to know, uh, especially if your patient is being exposed to that. So some lab tests, uh, there's the NutraVal FMV uh, from Genova. It includes an analysis of antioxidant status as part of the comprehensive uh, evaluation. Um, the oxidative stress analysis 2.0 it provides a more in-depth assessment of antioxidant defenses. And then finally, urinary F2 isoprostanes are useful in accessing and monitoring systemic antioxidant status. So these are some lab tests that we can see. And I think it's really important when we look at lab tests, uh, I think the, tr the, the, the real uh, uh, goal, gold standard is to take these and look at your, um, your genetics and see if they're uh, matching up, you know, and sometimes you're going to see really good antioxidant status and their genetics are going to say, oh, they shouldn't have a great antioxidant status. Well, they're probably doing things that support that, like the diet they eat. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about the solutions uh, that we see here. But I think it's important before I leave that you match uh, your genetics with labs to kind of say, okay, am I actually seeing in this person what I think I'm going to see? Uh, from their genetics. You cannot take genetics alone and say, okay, you need to be on all of these things. So <clears throat> solutions, I've already mentioned this. Uh, this is kind of uh, a, a repeating thing that's really important. I think as y'all being functional medicine uh, providers understand, but an organic diet uh, rich in fruits and vegetables. And organic is really important here because you don't want to say, oh, fruits and vegetables, and they're introducing more uh, oxidative substances into their uh, their, their, their body uh, because it takes work to get rid of those. Um, and the things we really want to focus on are things like raw or lightly cooked cruciferous vegetables such as broccoli, kale, and arugula. Uh, regular exercise can also boost natural antioxidant level. And then the supplements, uh, the most bang for the buck here, uh, probably vitamin C and DIM, astaxanthin, sulforaphane, uh, really important component of broccoli, Glutathione or NAC, um, of course, uh, we should uh, really uh, utilize these as needed, uh, but NAC is a really uh, inexpensive way to really boost glutathione. And selenium, selenomethionine, I uh, always have fun saying that one, uh, is as we kind of pointed out earlier, it's really important in glutathione peroxidase, uh, also with uh, uh, creating uh, glutathione. So let's talk a little bit about environmental toxins. I think this is a really uh, important uh, enzyme and they all kind of blend together because we'll see GSTP1 show up a little later in the slides. But uh, this is where the rubber really hits the road because if we think about uh, glutathione as being the master antioxidant, the, the one that we're really, the, the substance we're really trying to get to with a lot of our um, 
antioxidant therapies, uh, this is where the glutathione is attached. Uh, and it helps us to eliminate these environmental substances. And actually also will show, will show that it also helps us eliminate uh, estrogen uh, quinones. So uh, we have reduced enzyme function here. Uh, and the less active enzyme has a reduced ability to attach glutathione to toxic substrates, which I've mentioned. Uh, the substrates are things like hydrophobic toxins, um, inhalation toxins, uh, which we mentioned the forest fires right now. Uh, and you know, if you see pictures of the cities in the West Coast, this is really important to know their status. And then of course, estrogen metabolites, which I mentioned earlier. Areas of high expression, uh, the lungs, so airborne pollutants, once again, um, we see that uh, GSTP1 is very, very important. Uh, especially in those people that live in the urban areas or those that live near the forest fires right now. Uh, breast, uh, this is uh, reactive estrogen metabolites. So uh, the quinones, it's very important for getting rid of those. So, um, and it creates a less reactive, easily excreted uh, glutathione conjugate. So solutions, environmental toxins, uh, so anything that improves our glutathione is going to be really important, right? So here we are again, the plant-based organic diet rich in fruits and vegetables, especially cruciferous. Uh, avoid smoking and being around people that smoke. Uh, that's kind of Mr. Obvious right there. Uh, exercise, once again, exercise shows up because it's just really important detoxification if uh, you have uh, the nutrients there to help support you doing uh, super two to three hours of strenuous exercise and then not supporting the body uh, from that uh, exercise is not going to be beneficial. But we're talking about uh, exercise that is supported with good sleep, with good diet. And of course, the thing that is really, really sneaky, uh, household goods and cleaners. There's a lot of toxins in our environment that we're introducing, trying to make our house uh, clean. And we're, so we really need to be careful of these products. Supplements, uh, glutathione and or NAC, uh, sulforaphane and or DIM. I love DIM uh, it, it, and it, it plays a big role uh, in detoxification and alpha lipoic acid. Uh, so sometimes people's diet is, you know, really good or not so good, but they still, uh, from our previous tests, are showing that they're not detoxifying well. These are where the supplements would fit in well. Now, there is a caveat here. Look at uh, a, an enzyme called NERF2. NERF2 is a genomic switch that activates over a thousand protected genes. So anything that turns on NERF2 is going to turn on and make these, uh, these genes below much more active. So instead of trying to, you know, water each plant, you know, it's almost like creating a, a rain shower uh, when you turn this on. Everything gets, gets water. Uh, and it's protective against toxins and reactive metabolites, endocrine disruptors, and re reactive oxygen species. So uh, one example is that NERF2 activation supports the expression of enzymes involved in the synthesis and recycling of glutathione. So, I mean, it's like you could do, you know, instead of giving, uh, you know, tons of glutathione or detoxifying supplements, you could look at what are some things that we can do to turn on NERF and make sure that we have the right things like N acetylcysteine there and, and the right amino acids, but it really turns on the pathway for detoxif detoxifying the whole body. Some things uh, that are interesting there are sulforaphane, DIM, resveratrol are really, really helpful for NERF2 activation. So don't forget that NERF2 is uh, really important for turning on all the pathways instead of just looking at one enzyme and focusing just on that. So this is an area that I find very fascinating, which is estrogen metabolism. Uh, the catabolism or breakdown of estrogens can result in reactive intermediates. Uh, this process is dependent on numerous enzymes, one of which is highly susceptible to genetic variations, and that's COM-T. So COM-T is a catecholamine methyl transferase. So methyl uh, is really important, as we can see. And what you'll notice, uh, this detoxifies uh, reactive uh, products, including estrogen quinones. And so SAM-E, if you'll notice in the diagram here, uh, when we talk about methylation, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later, uh, but this is what we're really after. SAM-E is that 
final product from methylation uh, that we're able to now donate methyl groups, which makes substances able to be uh, detoxified much easier. And so when we take an active metabolite, we add a methyl group through it, through COM-T, uh, we get a less active metabolite and we can excrete it, which is really important. Now, COM-T is, I could spend, you know, another hour talking about COM-T and the role it plays in neurotransmitters. Uh, and what we look at here uh, in this scenario is that we really want to look at its ability to detox. And so individuals with AG or GG genotype are associated with reduced enzyme activity. These people are also going to hold on to dopamine more, which helps with focus, but it's not great when you're looking at someone uh, that is on estrogen therapy and uh, they're not getting rid of the estrogen as well. So you really want to know this COM-T status. If you're doing estrogen therapy or hormone therapy, uh, you really want to know this because you need to be supporting methylation and supporting COM-T. Uh, which you can do with things like magnesium and, and SAMe and other things. So when we look at COM-T, it really has a lot of relevance when we look at estrogen metabolites. So when we look here at estradiol uh, and estrone, which is on the far left of the diagram, to move those over into less uh, reactive uh, elements or, or hormones, we need to uh, take those to 4-hydroxy, and 2-hydroxy estradiol, uh, and then 2 and 4-hydroxy estrone. And then those are not, we're not out of the woods yet. We really need to take them further for them to be able to be excreted. And that's where COM-T comes in. So COM-T takes that methyl group from SAM-E, and it moves it to uh, the hydroxy forms of these hormones. And when we can go to a 2 and 4 methyl um, hydroxy estradiol and a 2 and 4 uh, methyl uh, hydroxy estrone, uh, then we're going to have a much improved uh, ratio uh, of these hormones and less likely to go to something uh, called a, uh, a estrogen quinone. And so when we go to those, these are dangerous molecules because they are free radicals, and they will actually cause DNA damage, DNA adducts. And so we, if we do have uh, problems here going to these methylated forms of uh, estrogen, then we really want to make sure that our GSTP1, which we mentioned earlier, is working effectively. So that's where we want to make sure uh, that we're doing what we need to do here with things like DIM, uh, make sure we're improving um, uh, uh, our glutathione production. So all of these do kind of connect. So you want to look at, when we look at estrogen metabolites, we want to look at COM-T and we want to look at GSTP-1. And so when we have uh, women on hormone therapy, you really need to be looking at the genetics. I think it's really important. And then uh, just as importantly, you need to be following labs. You just shouldn't start them on uh, hormones and then not look at labs uh, a couple months, two to three months later. And, and so the one I like and the one I've been uh, uh, reading more about and, and, and hearing about is the 2-hydroxy to 2-methylhydroxy and 4-hydroxy to 4-methylhydroxy estrogen ratios. And if we can see that, if we see a, a much higher uh, 2 hydroxy and 4 hydroxy to the methyl uh, hydroxy, that means we're not getting rid of estrogens as well. So we really want to pay attention to this ratio, and it indicates how effectively a patient methylates or detoxifies estrogens. Uh, and there were some res reference ranges there, which you will get with the labs that you may use there, uh, which uh, there are quite a few labs that do really good um, uh, estrogen metabolites. So solutions. Once again, here's plant-based organic diet rich in cruciferous vegetables. Cruciferous is really important here. A good source of uh, sulforaphane, DIM, uh, household goods and cleaners. I've kind of spoken to that already. And then, you know, we, we talked about what was interesting is that we talked about SAM-E and we always wonder, you know, why is methylation so important? Well, SAM-E is really important. It's important for making neurotransmitters, but it's important for detoxifying. So the things that we normally think about with methylation, of course, are folate, B2, B12, but 
the one thing that we need to look at here is choline. Choline, about 90% by you know, the papers I've read so far, 90% of Americans are deficient in choline. And choline is the, it's the number one consumer of meth, methyl groups. So if you have deficiency in choline, you're going to take all of that SAMe and you're going to divert it to making choline because your body needs it for liver health, nerve health, uh, and it's just, and for neurotransmitters. So you want to make sure if you're looking at methylation and you're covering methylation, and I see a lot of formulations out there, uh, this is what we want to do for methylation, but none of them have choline or very few have choline in them. So we want to make sure that we're getting choline uh, if we're trying to address methylation. If we have problems in the methylation cycle, also think of choline and there's some polymorphisms uh, that will uh, determine your choline need as well. DIM. Uh, probably one of the biggest bangs for the buck we can we can use for estrogen metabolism is DIM. Uh, it's probably and it's just really a benign uh, uh, boost to the uh, detox system. And so with that, I, I think you also have to look at glutathione and or NAC, and then of course sulforaphane. To recap, you know key areas of detoxification: uh, antioxidant enzymes environmental toxins, and estrogen metabolism. Uh, a lot of times these will, you know, these categories are somewhat artificial because they, the, uh, the enzymes move between the categories, but I think thinking of them that in those three ways kind of simplifies it so we can keep it straight in our brain. Lifestyle, we mentioned regular exercise. We want a uh, water filter to make sure we're not getting toxins from uh, the most essential thing is, which is a plenty of water. Uh, glass food containers. I mean, that's a, uh, so, so often now, so much that is sold is not glass. Um, house and beauty products. Uh, we've kind of mentioned that, but beauty products actually have, uh, you know, we're putting things on our skin and that's going systemically. So we really need to be careful there uh, of what we're using and putting into our body. And then diet. Uh, we've mentioned that, you know, the organic plant-based diet rich in cruciferous vegetables and a diversity of plant fibers. And then the supplements uh, that we want to look at are glutathione and or NAC, uh, DIM and or sulforaphane, uh, a foundational multivitamin. A multivitamin, we mentioned methylation, that addresses uh, all the things that you need there. Uh, and that's a really important because a lot of these pathways uh, that we mentioned need uh, things like selenium, uh, molybdenum, uh, other things. So you, you need a good multivitamin there to make sure your cofactors are present. And then dealer's choice of an antioxidant as such. So there's vitamin C, uh, ALA, uh, you know, you can name it. Uh, there's a lot of antioxidants out there, but I'll just tell you my personal preference. I love vitamin C. I think it's really uh, one of the best uh, antioxidants bang for your buck. Uh, another thing to consider is really turning on that NERF2, uh, and NERF2 uh, really responds to things like one of the, the sulforaphane uh, also responds to uh, resveratrol. So with that, how do we go about seeing um, what our genetics look like? And that's where uh, something I helped co-create is Pure Genomics. It's an online nutrigenomic tool. Uh, the great news about this is that this is actually a free tool uh, for both provider and the patient, and it's online, so puregenomics.com, and it features over 60 SNPs and 11 health categories from data already collected by 23andMe and Ancestry. So once you've got your genetic, genetic data um, from these companies, you don't need to gather it again, uh, and the patient can put this in, and it really creates a personalized approach to nutrition, uh, and it really allows us to understand maybe why we're seeing the labs that we're seeing and know the leverage points. And so the key uh, to genomics is that we, we can start understanding why we're seeing some of the things we're seeing. It doesn't explain everything, but it does give us some insights, especially with detoxification. And as I mentioned, this is a free platform for our uh, patients and for the providers. Um, and this is provided as a service on behalf of Pure Encapsulations.